on the left. Boom. I'm Zachary Fowler. And I'm the Wooded Beardsman. And this is the Wilderness Living Challenge, Maine. Yeah! Woo! <laughs> the point of the challenge is to gain or maintain our body weight while eating nothing but wild foods for seven days. Last time we did it in Canada, this time he's come down to join me in the coastal state of Maine. This season of the Wilderness Living Challenge has been brought to you in part by Bath Subaru and Woolwich, Maine, LP Adventure for making the Adventure Mobile a reality, Hidden Woodsman Backpacks, the best backpacks made on earth of the best materials, Ayuno Survival Shovel, Gerber Knives and Multi-Tools made right here in the US, Outdoor Vitals, the maker of my favorite jacket, sleeping bag, and this really cool pillow. And Hoorag, have Hoorag make you a custom company Hoorag today. Link, <laughs> Link's in the description below. Ah, uh, yeah. Good morning. It is day... I don't know what day it is. Day seven. Chris says day seven. He's already out there moving around. I'm having a hard time getting up. Get going. It's so just cozy in here in my shelter. It's just so nice. I gotta get up. It's beautiful out there. It's cool, breezy, which makes it so easy to want to stay in bed, but it's hard to have adventures from your bed, huh? <sighs> Let's do this. How you doing? How you feeling? I feel like I was out all night drinking. Really? I feel better than I did last night though. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was uh, dry heaving last night. That sucks. Sucks a lot. Uh, I, feel, I feel like I'd eat today, which is uh, better than I thought. That's a good thing. <laughs> We're gonna get our turkey on or what? Yeah, I'm thinking like turkey turkey noodle soup. Turkey, noodle? we don't we don't have any noodles though. So. <laughs> Let's see how that turkey looks. Hey, it looks beautiful in the pot there. When I was a kid, 
My dad used to say, don't let anything stand in your way. Stand tall, think clear. Don't let them see ain't to fear. All right, I got the fire going. And looks like Chris has got the soup all diced up. I'll throw some water in there and put it on. And we'll have fresh turkey soup for breakfast. Just what the doctor ordered so Chris can feel wonderful. Coincidentally, we are now packaging and selling this because there's going to be plenty of leftovers. So leave in the comments below if you're interested in us sending you a package of turkey soup. Do it yourself, turkey soup. We just send you the dry, roasted turkey parts and you have to do the rest. Here we go, stew is almost ready. Gabe man makes stew. <laughs> and if you notice, because of the wind, we've uh, done some little bit of yard work here. We raked everything, everything's raked back for a good ring around the fire, so it's safer. So that uh, it can't blow out. It's Since the uh, rain has stopped for the last day or so, the wind has really dried out the surface. And it's really, will be quite easy at this point right now for the wind to blow something out of there and catch the leaves that are all, the fall leaves that are all dry. You gotta be very careful. I remember, you know, when I first moved up to the land, started playing in the woods again after, I mean, I played in the woods a lot with my dad as a kid, but when I first moved back up to the land, I started clearing this almost 20 years ago now. I, uh, I had some wood, I had chainsawed some trees down. I was burning the dead branches to clean them up. We went off into the shade because it was super hot in the springtime, a day like today, just blazing sun. We were relaxing, having a drink and we came back up into the field. My chainsaw was getting flames blown onto it. The leaves were just burning and blowing and burning and blowing across the yard. And we ran over it. My chainsaw helmet just melted, just disappeared in like a matter of seconds. I ran over and grabbed the chainsaw out of it. And I'll show you a clip right here. That's my chainsaw today. It still has some burn marks because I was crazy enough to run over it and grab it out of the flames and pull it away. And uh, we stomped it all out in a matter of seconds. But if we had walked away, I would have, lost all of this and ruined everything for everybody else so you got to be very careful with fire <laughs> that worked so good those training wheel chopsticks like regular chopsticks you're trying to like get down into a boiling pot but with the training wheel ones, they're still attached like a fork and you could just you get them a little bit longer. Well, they're just tongs, they're just tongs. But I uh, managed to score myself a whole bunch out of there. I got a little pot, full pot of, uh, or not really a full pot, this thing's bare bowl can hold quite a bit. So I got a good bit of food in there and just a little bit of broth to keep that uh, turkey in so it doesn't, um, get cold while I'm eating it. Learned that trick from actually Chris Thorne out there in Texas when we we're doing the 30 day survival challenge. I kept eating my meat and then my broth separate and he'd put them together and finally one day I uh, like tried what he was doing. It was like, oh wow, with the, the broth at the bottom, you're good to go. You still get a warm bite on your last bite. Lord, thank you for this food, this day protect and watch over us and bless our adventure that we might come home with some something more to eat in Jesus name amen have myself some smooth finish I thought that was a, a good idea on the seventh day we're looking for a smooth finish with my blackout coffee I got a flavor for <laughs> I only got four or three flavors with me but I got definitely got a fa flavor for the final day the smooth finish Blackout Coffee, one of my sponsors. You can get the uh, Blackout Coffee in the link below. And they even have a coffee deal. So uh, it's a really good coffee and you can get a great discount. Like almost like, I think it was like 20% off. Uh, it lost a piece. Whoops. 20% off or something like that if you get a subscription so it comes to you in the mail. 
Mmm. Mmm. More broth. Is there some of those fatty bits all cut up in here? Yes, sir. Oh, good. I'm curious to know if they break down or they stay as like a, a chunky booger. Yeah. It tastes like eating a booger. Actually, not. How, how do you I don't know? know. I've never eaten a booger how, how, that how big. You know? How do you know? Yeah, <laughs> I, I've never eaten a booger that's, you know. Recently. Recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You don't remember? Yeah, I was gonna try just uh, trying to figure out what year I just stopped eating boogers. Was it last year. <laughs> <laughs> when I got married. <laughs> last week. The first time. No. Um. Almost tastes a bit drier. Yep. Yeah. You need more time to relax. You know, it's tougher now. No, I think, well, maybe, but my thinking is that if we had stripped all the meat off and then stewed all the bones and stuff, and if we had all the time for this, but we want to eat, so stewed all the bones up and then threw the meat in just to warm it before yeah. we ate it. It'll relax more. You think so? Another day. I don't think so. Yep. You gotta let it. You gotta let the meat, the meat, as soon as you put meat in the broth, remember the beaver? Put it in goes like this, tightens up real hard, and then over time, it uh, it relaxes again. Some salt and some fat will But it was so juicy again. yesterday. Yeah, well it's done the tough phase. We're, we're rushing, obviously, to get out of here, but if you give it a couple, like an overnight, the rest of today, overnight, tomorrow, it'll be good. Mm. Leave it in the comments below if you have any ideas of things that we missed out on, stuff that we could do make this turkey softer without being able to use butter, olive oil, any added cheats. Um, personally, I think if we had smoked the turkey with a, a heat shield around it, so it smoked and cooked in a shorter period of time without splitting it in half, we would have had, I don't know, that breast was super juicy. So I think it was inevitable that the drumsticks would be pretty tough because they run around all the time, that's all they do, and or their wings were tough and it was inevitable but if you know of any tricks or something that we might have missed leave it in the comments below
Boom. First try. I missed. If you'd like to learn how to shoot a slingshot, check out my how to shoot a slingshot video linked in the description below. It is the most comprehensive how to shoot a slingshot video on YouTube. And it's all about not the way I shoot with super draw. It's all about the most accurate way to learn how to shoot by anchoring and consistency. And it'll get you shooting and hitting targets like this at this distance. Oh, you'll be within a day of practice after watching that video. I bet you could hit a can three out of 10 times. All right, well, instead of wasting more ammo, we got stuff to do. We got squab to hunt. This is exciting. This is something I've wanted to do for a while. And we finally, Found the right opportunity since slingshot hunting is illegal in Maine, but since we're doing pest control... Alright, here we go. Off on another adventure. I do love my adventures. I hope you do too. This has been a great time. It's our last day. We still got one more episode after this, The Way Out. And uh, we're going to do a special feast so that the way out video isn't boring for you. A special, special feast. And uh, check that out in the next video after this. And check out the Wooded Beardsman on his channel, Wooded Beardsman. And uh, you can see his whole take on the side because he has a very different take than I do. It, totally different this time. Yeah, totally. Well, not totally. Maybe the first couple ones will be similar. So if you guys are watching the first well, couple, the, there is... There's there's differences. There's huge differences. Huge differences. Because even if even if we were together all day and filming the exact same thing, I edit completely differently, and he uh, talks about the whole calories and ratio and the weight and things like that. Yeah. And I don't. I just I just have fun. I'm here for the adventure. So you I know. think I think the most important difference between Zach and I is mine's just more raw. So if you want raw, uncut kind of deal. Then it's not appreciate. uncut. You spend a lot. He spends. Edited, he spends. He spends raw. a lot of time editing. Yeah, don't get that. Don't confuse yeah. that with like, oh, I don't want to watch some boring, you know, unedited thing. No. He uh, he spends a lot of time it's on his just videos, more just like I do. He just does it differently. More raw. Yeah. Different different interpretation of the same uh, adventure. Different, yeah. Different perspective. Yeah. And totally. we split up a whole bunch of times too during this adventure. Did different things. So yes. if you want to see it all, you have to watch it all. Go back to the beginning and start there playlist is down below in the description. All right, we are here at the dairy farm. They've asked us to help remove some of the obnoxious pigeons and uh, we are going to do so with our slingshots and possibly I got a really cool pellet gun if you saw it at the beginning when I was packing for the adventure. The Krull Warrior King pellet gun. <laughs> the uh, Krull, which means king, pellet gun, puncher, Krull puncher with uh, all set up. So hopefully there's some long shots we can get in on this. The ones I can't take with the slingshot, we can take care of some of these pigeons and we'll have something new for the stew pot. Hopefully. We're gonna have to take some of this food home. I'm gonna be eating turkey and smoked fish for a while after this, and lobster. So, yeehaw. Take one off closer. Hello. Hey, how you doing? I'm Zach. Yeah. Nice to meet yeah. you. Yeah. So he does the Take it away from the, the specific diet we had planned for the cows to eat and give them all the Oh, because they're plucking all the stuff they want out and leaving all the other stuff? Yeah, you know. Yeah, so you mix the grain just for this and then they go and steal all the parts of it yeah. that uh, make it important for them. Right. I got gotcha. you. Right. I haven't got time enough. I want to stand here and watch the pigeons all day. I got other things I got to do. We'll watch our pigeons for you and yeah. see how many we can take back to the stew pot and uh, make the most of it so we're not just not just helping him out. We are, I mean, we are just helping him out, but we also be helping ourselves out with something to eat. Yeah. As far as the Wilderness Living Challenge, like you heard him saying, 
they getting into the grain, stealing the best parts of the grain or important parts of the debt balanced diet for these cows so that he can do his thing and bring his product to market. So let's get doing it. Thank you, sir. Yeah. All right. All right. Ready to go? What are you thinking? Uh, I think let's gear up. Slingshot? Let's gear up with the slingshots and... Uh, he said they set up on the silo too. That might be a decent shot. That right would be a great me. shot for the pellet gun if there was something sitting around and uh, stuff. Why don't you run up there and sprinkle some grain? <laughs> That's the one I just made with that new Precise, but I like it. So this is what we're going to use for ammo inside the barn. It's clay, compact balls, not kiln dried, so they're hard. They're just compact, so when they hit the stuff, they disintegrate. And we're going to try and see, they're a little lighter, and hopefully, we're going to test it on a piece of metal first. They won't punch through the, the metal roofing on the beautiful barn here for them. But they're also weighty enough, they don't fly off too much. Which of these sides is not like the other? Three days later, they starved to death. Oh, there we go. We got it. <laughs> All right, here you go. Now you're ready. This is mine. That's yours. What's the... if you get to keep it too? If you get if you get a bird with it. I have to get a bird though. You have to get a bird to if keep it. If I get it. two birds, do I get to keep the pouch too? Okay. Yeah, you can keep the pouch too. <laughs> if I get two. Yeah. If you get. If you get one bird, I'll let you keep the pouch and the slingshot, and I'll even throw in some ammo. No right, deal. <laughs> so what a beardsman is shooting the Axiom Ocularis. Chris is shooting our custom, this is called the Hornet. This is the one that I designed. I made a ski, uh, took a ski and turned it into a slingshot. And then after enjoying shooting that for a year, I turned it into a poly-framed slingshot that is made by Beast Coast Slingshots for us to sell on the website. And now... It's much, it's probably the best back pocket slingshot ever. Yeah, so let's do this. First of three wins. <laughs> what the pigeon look like? They have a a purplish collar and stuff. I'm pretty sure they're not uh, gun shy. <laughs> They'll probably stay. Anybody see anything? There's lots of these little birds. It's a different kind of bird. Hello. Do you want to scratch? Oh yeah, that feels good. Come here. No? Oh yes. Our little cows. Uh, I can talk to cows. Did you know that? Yes, you are. Yes. Oh, yes. You want to scratch under the chin? Oh, you want to lick. You want to lick, huh? Yeah. Oh, lick the camera. <laughs> This is what we do it for, the cows, to protect their feed. <laughs> they are cute though, aren't they? Are you delicious tasting? <laughs> They're not big enough to eat yet, especially this guy here. You would be very tender, wouldn't you? We all see different things when we look at cows. Whoa. Hey there. There's, There's pigeons coming out the backside. It's a bit on the mucky side here. I just heard Chris blah, stomped right in it. Hey, hey, whoever loses has got a belly flop into there. That's, look at that. That's some good stuff right there. That's uh, about a foot of muck right there. Kept in there to, I don't know what they're doing, like letting it, letting it, uh, ooze up so they can spread it on the field later. Exactly. There's our pigeons. All right. Oh, they just flew off. Oh yeah, there's a whole bunch of them up there in the roof of the barn. Oh 
Oh, right there. Right there. Oh. All right, my shot. You missed, Chris. Camera guy. And which one? Yeah, I'm on you, dude. Oh, that one's to the left. Boom. One Stoned down. Them. Oh, dude, you gotta eat that. <laughs> <laughs> Collect your prize. Oh, he's not that dirty. No, he didn't get that dirty. He's. We're gonna have to figure out something about the shadows, though, for the next shot. So we gotta be like in there, I think. There we go. One down with the slingshot I just made. First shot. Not bad. First shot. First right in try? the. Yeah, right in the back of the, the neck there. And, uh,. Yeehaw. Let's see how many more we can get. I was like, I haven't had the chance to do this so far. Like, <sighs> you, just stick it in your pocket. That's so gross. Look at, he just dropped his slingshot right in the poo. That's my fault, because I got him running the camera. I don't know what you want to do with that. We're gonna Wipe it on your shirt. I'm not wiping it on my shirt. You wipe oh. it on your shirt. Oh, oh, there's that was way five low. Up there. That was way low. That's way. That yeah. was a. Uh, that was like 40 yards. Oh, oh, oh. oh the, the wind. The other one's flying around. <laughs> They're everywhere. I think we can just. All right, keep so we just need to keep moving around until we get them. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that one. Oh. oh, he hopped right down in I shouldn't second. have hesitated. I should have just flicked it. We go to the other side and see if they're on there up in that same spot. I think they'll be... Oh, dude, look at this flock of them coming. Okay, here we go. What do we got? Ah! I'm not going to land anymore. I got a nice shot We need that. the... You know what we need is the dragon claw with the uh, shotgun get the barrel. So you can pick them off I know. I could so easily. Yeah, they're going to come back and land. Oh, boys. On the <laughs> we gotta get far. Go get the air gun. All right, let's go get the air gun. Let's go. Bringing out the big guns. If I have, at least if I have the air rifle out, I can take the long shots, and then I can switch to the uh, slingshot when they're closer. So. Startle the cows. Flip of uh, 25 caliber slugs. That'll do the job. There we go. All right, let's do this. Anything? Uh, yeah, they were. It was kind of. They're still in the middle. I took one shot. It was way low, but they're way, way in the middle. There's one. Oh, there he goes. Wow, it's like they got our number or something. Eight, six, seven, five. He's down. Nine, yeah. Nine, nine. Ugh. Ew. Oh man. Ugh. You see him? Um, yep, I see him. Wait for that wind to... Stoned him. Nice. And that's down. Yeah. Whoa, that's mine. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's 
Okay. <laughs> there we go. First one with the new pellet, pellet gun, the krill. These birds are gonna need some serious washing. Yeehoo! Ah, oh, that's that's electric. No wonder the cows stay in there. <laughs> no wonder they're staying. <laughs> I thought that was that awfully. Was a, I was. I thought it was a static. I felt it in my foot. Like <laughs> I thought it was static electricity. I was like, you taste it. I. I could taste my fillings. <laughs> Alright, is he still there? Or did I my I yelling my yelling ah oh! I don't see him. We gotta go back down the other end. Oh <laughs> Kitty, you coming to claim the Get, hey, claim get the away meal? from my game. <laughs> He's hungry. That's hey, hey, hey! <laughs> it's right off. That's mine! I'm hungry too! <laughs> you listen to him, look at him! <laughs> You want a pigeon too, get, bud? Get a close, get a good close shot. See what you can. You want a pigeon? I'm sorry, honey. Rip his wing off and give it to him. No. Got him. <laughs> Crawl the warrior king. Crawl puncher, actually. But awesome. Let Chris shoot one. All right, giving Chris a shot with the gun. He's got a pigeon right up on the top of there. You ready? Let me zoom in on it. Yeah, go for it. Down. Oh, there he is. There? I think so. He's right there in the yard. It didn't make it far, just from that building there, and glided down to his end right here. I got it. Yeah, thanks. This, this thing's deadly accurate, Yeah, man. that was your first shot First with it. shot. First, almost the first time looking through the scope. <laughs> it is the first, you well, were looking, second. Yeah. He was testing his eyeball on the scope, trying to find the sight range, and then he nailed it. Seriously, what what is this? That's a Krell puncher. Krell puncher? Yep. Dude, that's awesome. That's wicked awesome. That That's the Krell puncher from Annihilator Air, air Guns. It's So it's not just any air gun. He tunes them and puts some custom parts in it, makes it so they're tuned to perfection. And then the silencer is, uh, I can never remember the name. So cool. we don't startle the cows. I'm gonna have to get one of these? You're gonna have to get one of these. Yeah, it's pretty I think cool. so. That's fun to shoot. Yeah. Wicked fun. That whole setup is just a thousand bucks. So if you guys are wondering, it's not a super heavy bird, but I think if we got like a dozen of these, we could make a good meal out of it. Yeah, we're up to four, uh, three right now. Three? Yep. And you, sure. you shot one too. Where did yep. it go? All right, time to pack it in. They're they're uh, doing their cow feeding, and they said uh, that we should pack it in, and head off. We got three. We lost one because uh, we hit it. It went down inside the barn, and the cow was stomped it into the mud. I looked, I didn't find it, so we lost one. So we could have had four. Coming home with three. That's pretty decent, though. Especially for our first try at this. All right, that was pretty awesome for my first time out with the air rifle. I've just been shooting targets with it so far. It's extremely accurate, extremely quiet. Didn't startle, actually the slingshot round shooting that startled the cows more than anything else. And so I, I kind of backed off from trying to get in there and shoot with the slingshot. And we got ourselves some squab to make for dinner. What do you think? It was fun. Yeah. But I'm hungry. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Thankfully, I brought my. You know, oh, look at there, they're sitting yeah, right there just no, mocking us. They circled around. They I saw circled them. back. <laughs> they, they, they know we're leaving. <laughs> yeah, so they're coming back.
Dear Diary, I wonder why fancy restaurants call pigeon squab on the menu. Does churching it up make it all that much more palatable? It's probably more about the price point. Because who's going to pay 28 bucks for an ounce of pigeon? Maybe they're onto something. After all, Chinese restaurants call those pieces of meat on a stick teriyaki, and everybody knows what those are made out of. So if I was to open a fancy restaurant and I wanted to put squirrel on the menu, I wonder what you'd call it. You'd have to call it something good if you wanted a high price point. Maybe tree fritters, tree fryers, fur, no not fur, definitely not fur. I don't know, I bet the French have a word for it. This is the last meal. Last meal before we weigh out tomorrow morning. Alright. The squabs are done. Ugh. You gonna go in my shelter and eat? Yeah. Let's do it. Alright. Got your trout and your hotcakes. Yeah. He made his little hotcakes again that he does. And uh, that's his one ration that he brought. He wanted to experiment to see if carbs would help or add anything to it, so he... So he made these hotcakes that get, give him uh, 400 and what, 30 calories? 440. 440, 440 calories. My fish? Yeah. All right, so I got my three uh, birds. What are you gonna eat? <laughs> <laughs> you want any of my fish? How are we gonna do, yeah, I would love some of your trout. What are we just gonna gnaw on these or? I don't know. Like, <laughs> gnaw half of it off and there's then hand no, it over? There's no right way to do it. I think these are, oh, came right off of there. Oh, dude, these are so juicy and so wet. <laughs> this is like, this is so much better than the turkey. This, oh my goodness, it smells like chicken. These, these little pigeons are like juicy, delicious chicken. All right, check your trout to see if it's done. You just check the firmness of the back. That'll tell you the answer. But you, of course, I can't really describe how to check it. You just have to do it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. To check your squab to see if it's done, take a big bite of it. <laughs> <laughs> look at, look at how, would you look at that? Would you look at that? It's like a tiny chicken. It's all there, all juicy. Let's take a bite and find out. Oh, the little wings. Mmm. Oh, it's just so fatty. Oh. So, the pigeon has a slight, um, just like some of these other birds have had, smaller, has a slight liver taste to it. You ever notice that? No. Yeah. Tastes like liver? Yeah, it has a slight taste, almost a, a hint of liver. But it's a lot more like chicken. Like a delicious tiny chicken. With a slight hint of almost liver. A bite? Yeah. Oh, ah, that's brutal. That's Oh, that's good. Good, right? Yeah. Oh, it's so good with the spice on it. Oh, there's a little bird. It's so good. <clears throat> I should probably mention in this video, since it's going to be our, probably our last meal, that we, um, we might be having some more spices come out. So you have to keep a heads up for that. Yeah. Zach's going to come up with spice. And we'll see what else we come from there. And... Possibly Bob Hansler. Yeah, we've been talking to Bob, so Bob Hansler may have a spice and they'll all be available on the Fowler's Makery Mischief.com. So we're going to try and collaborate so they're all located in one place. Everybody can go there and find them. And we share and try each other's spices and use them on different recipes and 
Bob's idea is to do a rattlesnake oh. spice. Look at the size of that chunk of meat that just came out of there. It's oily. Mm-hmm. Wow. This is very oily and just like just like chicken. I'm trying to show you. It was just like this. Oh, big old chunk of meat. Mmm. Oh, once again, I'm so hungry. I forgot to say grace. Thank you, Lord, for the pigeons and this adventure that you'd helped us to wrap it up so smoothly. Amen. This is the best way to cook a fish. For sure. This, Aside from that, you could cook it that way and then add alder trees, green alder trees, and smoke it. It'll be the best fish you ever had in your life. Smoke it overnight, or as long as you can, or a couple hours. Whatever smoke you add, you'll appreciate. Who will not be named? When I told them that that was on my list is going after pigeons, like, no, why would you do that? They're so tiny, it wouldn't benefit you at all. But I tell you. Are you referring to me? No. I don't think No, I you picked that. on my bird on a loan. <laughs> You're like, you might, <laughs> I did. Yeah, yeah you're right, you'd have I to did. eat 50 of those a day. <laughs> I remember that. Or, 100 and tw or 250 of them a day. Did, to I, get... did I have a number for you? That's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. So I ate a sparrow on a loan. And they put in the thing like, this is 40 calories. You know? <laughs> but I got it with my slingshot. So it was. Oh, they put up the number on the screen. Yeah, it was a boon to my. Dude, they were making fun of you too. Yeah. <laughs> it was a psyche boon more than it was anything else. Uh, you know, you well, yeah, achieved your goal. I would shoot a stupid bird if it was around camp too. Mm -hmm. What else are you going to do? Yep. I mean, you wouldn't pass it up. I'm just saying, I think I was more referring to... <laughs> uh, I wonder what pigeons are... Um... Each one? Yeah. There's quite a bit here, it feels like. Quite a bit more than I thought there'd be. Yeah. Yeah, it looks it looks substantial. I keep calling them squab, and I call it squab because they serve them in restaurants, and they church up the name <laughs> to make it more palatable. Instead of just eating dumpster pigeons, they're called <laughs> they say squab on the menu. Well, they're a clean bird. I mean, they're eating not really gross stuff. No, yeah. here's your half ish. Not much left. I'm going to town on my half of the trout there. And uh oh, so good. I feel like I feel like Gollum. We put so much into every day. It's like we're we're burning so many calories running all around doing all this and we're just like mm -hmm. by the time it's eating time. So good. Yeah, so I was gonna ask you guys, what do you think where should we do the next one or should we do another one or should we just give up because we are terrible at filming and <laughs> surviving? <laughs> what do you guys think? You suck guys, at this. You guys suck. You guys oh. See this little birdlet? <laughs> Realistically, how many pigeons do you think you could eat in one sitting? Like at an all-you-can-eat pigeon buffet? Dozen. Probably two dozen. Well, because if you had a dozen, you'd only just you'd just like eat nibble this part and that part a little bit, and then be like, I'm done. <laughs> and you move on to the next one. You're not gonna do that, are you? No, I'm trying to get every last drop out of it. It is a really good meat. Look at how greasy they are from those little birds. <laughs> All right, I am in bed. <sighs> oh, feeling good after those yummy, delicious pigeons. I'm gonna sleep well. Today is our final day of eating wild, but the adventure is not over quite yet. Tomorrow, we're gonna weigh out. We're gonna go out, haul our lobster traps first. Get our last bit of lobsters out of there, and we're going to do a special, um, our first day out of the Eating Wild Feast. Um, so it's going to be an adventure all in its own right. Our weigh-in and our final thoughts on the whole challenge. And um, so, yeah, come back for that. Uh, see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Fowler out.